nonlinear regression examples. Right now, the only example I have is fitting to a Gaussian. Uh, at some point, I hope to add a sine or cosine and other functions that I get requests for. Fit to a Gaussian. So here's where we start off. We have this set of measurements. We have X and Y measurements, and here they are in MATLAB, and we plot these, and wow, we can maybe kind of make out some sort of Gaussian, but that's pretty noisy data. But we want to fit it to this Gaussian. So we have some kind of amplitude. We have some kind of offset of where the Gaussian, where the center of the Gaussian is, and we have the width of the Gaussian. So the step one here in the formulation is identify the unknown parameters. What are the coefficients that define our curve fit? Well, in this case, it's A, the amplitude, X naught, the offset, and sigma, the width of our Gaussian. So our column vector containing our curve fit parameters will contain our A, X naught, and sigma. We know before we get to the code, we're going to have to do a whole bunch of derivatives on paper. So that's what's happening here. Since we have three parameters, we have three partial derivatives to calculate. Skipping the algebra here, the partial derivative of our function with respect to A is simply this. And that's because this is a, a, a constant multiplying A. Now, if we look at this, that is our original function divided by A, and it'll turn out that's a slightly easier way to calculate it in the code because we will have already calculated the function. Now we have the partial derivative with respect to X naught, a little bit more work here, uh, but in the end, we are, we're left with this function multiplying our original function. And last with respect to Sigma, similar work here, uh, similar looking expression, a little bit different, multiplying our original function. And as I mentioned, doing it this way, since we're already going to be evaluating F, that makes it a little bit easier to evaluate those partial derivatives. So in summary, there is our Z matrix. That's what we would write down on paper and we would have that next to ourselves when we get into the code. Now, when we actually calculate this, we have three equations, if you will. Here's our, our partial derivative with respect to A, partial derivative with respect to X naught, and partial derivative with respect to sigma. And what we'll do is we will put all our measured values of X into a column vector or a one-dimensional array and just calculate this entire column in the Z matrix at once. We'll calculate this other column of the Z matrix at the same time, and then this third column. And that makes it a little bit more compact and easy to do. All right, first thing the code has to do is make an intelligent guess. So looking at that equation, and we have a whole bunch of random measured samples, how can we do this? Well, maybe what we could do is search for the maximum value of F and assume that that is A. A slightly more intelligent thing might be to find the maximum and minimum, and the difference between those two is A. So give that some thought, look at your data, and see what you can come up with to make a really good guess of what the amplitude is. For the center position, well, it's, I think a good guess is somewhere in the middle of your range of values of X. Maybe a better thing you could do is, is find the position of the maximum value that you just found. And maybe that's a better guess of where the center position is. The width. Maybe what you could do is look at the range of values that you're given for X and subtract the minimum from the maximum and maybe choose half of that or something like that. Uh, pretty much no matter what you do, you're going to have a much better guess doing something like this than just choosing a random number. So we're in the main loop. And the first thing we'll do is we will evaluate our function. And what I've shown at the bottom here is just the function value over 10 iterations. So here's the original function with our curve fit to our guest parameters. And what we can see is that we're, we're improving, we're improving, we're improving. And hopefully by the time we get over here, we have pretty good estimate of what our curve fit parameters would be. But one thing we are looking for is that we're not seeing like any infinities or not a numbers or other crazy things that would indicate that this is not working.
since we just evaluated the function with our curve fit parameters, we can now calculate this error term D. That's telling us how good the fit is. So D is our measured values minus the values that we just calculated. And here we're plotting D. Here's D at the first iteration with our guess parameters. And we can see that it's improving, improving, improving. And we're really not going to expect this to go completely to zero. And that's because we have noise in our measurements. So we're really just looking to make sure that the numbers from one iteration to the next aren't changing. Now we build the big Z matrix. And I like to calculate three column vectors. Here's the first column, second column, third column, and then stick them into the Z matrix. So here's the Z matrix on the first iteration with that first guess at our curve fit. And here's the Z matrix after about 10 iterations, just to give you an idea of the numbers. Once we have the Z built and we've already calculated our D, we can use least squares and calculate delta A. This is by how much we should be changing our parameters. And so here's by how much we need to change it after the first iteration. And we can see that through 10 iterations. And we can definitely see that the change in these parameters are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's from these, that will be our convergence criteria. When the change in those parameters falls below some threshold, we are done. What we've calculated was just how much we need to change those curve fit parameters. So now we actually need to change the curve fit parameters. So the new curve fit parameters are the old curve fit parameters plus the change that we just calculated. So here we're plotting our curve fit parameters at the first iteration, second, third. And what we can see is we can watch them converge and they're really not changing much anymore between the ninth and the 10th iteration. So the very last thing is to calculate the error. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the change in these curve fit coefficients. I am normalizing it. So we're really looking at relative changes. And we have three curve fit parameters here. So I'm gonna take the maximum one and wait till that dips below some threshold. And if I'm constantly looking at the maximum one, I can watch that go down, 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 down. And we can see we're getting pretty well converged after about 10 iterations. So once we're done, here's our final numbers that we arrived at after 10 iterations. And if we use those in our curve, here's our final curve fit that maybe we would write in our publication. And we're plotting our Gaussian in the middle of these measured points. Here's what our curve fit looks like through each iteration. So here's our, our Gaussian with our first initial guess. And then we're improving it, iteration one, two, three, four, five. And, and we can see that it's converging. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.